All right, Eric. So one of the things that I, I think just everybody will find interesting is, you know, you talked about earlier, we went from standalone systems to the multifun multifunction displays, the MFDs. Uh, but what a lot of people probably don't know is that Furuno actually, we invented the MFDs. We, we came did. out with the first MFD, didn't yeah, we? Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about yeah. that. It was called the FRS 1000, and that was introduced back in what, 90? 99, around there, yeah. So we created this product that it wasn't quite the same as these modern MFDs where everything's in a standalone display that's built in all together. We had a processor unit, but then we had dedicated displays that you could put all over the boat. And that processor unit would bring in the sounder or the fish finder and the radar and the chart plotter all into a processor unit. And we had cabling attached to the monitors uh, with controllable monitors that you could put in various stations around the boat. And that was the original MFD. That was, you know, the FRS, uh, yeah, the FRS was the original MFD. I spent a lot of time on it. The cool thing is that it was kind of like the, you know, the, the, the Ford Model T of cars. And now, you know, it was, a, it was, it was you know, the start of, hey, where can we go from here? Well, you know, I, re yeah. I remember that. We introduced it at the Miami Boat Show. Right. And, uh, and I remember, the, you know, all of the other competitors that were there, because we all had the standalone displays. Right. And we introduced that. I remember everybody coming in looking at that yeah. and going, Wow. Wow. That's all It one. really was uh, uh, unique, yeah. and it, now we take it for granted. It's, right. it's kind of like your iPhone. It's yeah. like everybody has one. Right. But when it first came out, everybody was like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. And that was really what that, that FRS 1000 was, right. where it was so innovative and taking everything and putting it into one. Yeah. It just hadn't been done before. Right. You know, and, and nav stations had to be bigger. You know, you had to have dedicated displays. And the concept of the MFD really didn't exist, right? And when we came out with it, people were going, you mean that's the only display I need to get all that information? And we said, yes, that's the concept. You don't have to have three or four or five big displays. You know, because even back then, you had a separate dedicated GPS on, right next to everything right. that was feeding everything. Right. Or maybe not, maybe it would, it would just work by itself. And then you had a chart, you, you might have had a chart plot, you might not have had a chart plot, you might have had paper charts back then too, so it was still common, right? right? So you didn't even, you might not have had paper chart. I mean, you know, depending on what you're doing, but you had your GPS or your Loran, you had your radar, you had your, you know, your fish finder, and you may or may not have had, you know, digital charts back then were like a new, brand new thing. People are going, wow, I don't really trust these digital charts. You know, now we take it for granted, right? right. But uh, at that time, you know, paper we, we charts were still popular. We complain yeah. when there's not enough detail. Exactly, yeah. We're just like happy to yeah. have sticks. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, and then the first, that's right, the first digital charts, we call them stick charts because they really were super low resolution and you had like a harbor entrance where you just had two well two lines coming in right uh, rather than the detail that we have now you know so yeah. it was a, it was just a different world but the key thing is that the frs 1000 built all that together on a single display and, it, and, and it that paved, was paved yeah. the way and then in 2001 we introduced navnet right exactly um, which really was that that next step and yeah. it really created the the evolution to where we are today because yeah. we brought in the ethernet network yeah. and, and that whole concept of being able to network all these things through ethernet. That's right. Which prior to then, it was, it was just a proprietary networking system right. that you would have to plug those cables in. And so by opening up to what's an industry standard in, in the computer industry, right really revolutionized again yeah. how a multifunction display i mean other other companies have brought in multifunction displays after the frs 1000 mm -hmm. but then navnet really just it, yeah. it ethernet up. networking really changed it was a paradigm shift in the market and we predicted that too we knew it because we saw what happened in offices in fact something that the topology changed from what was called a token ring where you had like a ring network of computers and if one computer went down, you really didn't know where the failure was. But then the, the introduction of, of hubs and, and ethernet, uh, more of a star topology, really kind of made it much, much easier to install everything, protect right. the network and troubleshoot the network. And I said it at the time, I said, you know, when my kid's Xbox goes down, 
Uh, he, he might not know why it's down, but he knows he's got to go look in the closet and look for the blinking lights to see what's going on, right? right? So, and that was true at the time, and, and it's true today. There's no difference in that technology today, so it's right. actually really cool. So that's 2001, yeah. 2005, then we introduced VX2, which right. is very similar to NavNet, NavNet 1, 1 right. mm -hmm. um, but just had like faster processors. More refined, yeah, yeah more refined. Yeah. And then, so we went from there to 2008, which was NavNet 3D, 3D right? mm -hmm. which was, again, another interesting and and really kind of uh, that's when the, the chart technology started to change and become uh, much more user detailed. friendly and detailed yeah because yeah, we yeah. were able to lay it down yeah, and lay have it down a 3d show, in a 3d perspective show the information network it across different systems bring in more detailed acoustic information as well so it, it really changed the changed the market and uh, again, the capability of networking, networked radars really kind of added redundancy too because with Navnet 1 and VX2, you still had to have a dedicated display that was your radar. Right. And with uh, with Navnet 3D, the introduction of networked radars, it, it kind of eliminated that and made the system more redundant and more flexible. Now, now admittedly, Navnet 3D is kind of where, where Faruna took a black eye with the user interface where, I mean, it was, it was a very cool system yeah. and it had a ton of mm -hmm. capabilities yeah. to it. But that was our kind of our downfall is that we almost yeah. put too much into it and it was a little yeah. difficult to use. Yeah, it had a dedicated keyboard, but what, what Navnet 3D really needed, which it didn't have, was a touch screen. It needed the capability to be able to touch the screen. Right. It would have simplified and it, it didn't, dramatically. It didn't, didn't exist yet. It didn't no, exist no. yet. The technology wasn't quite there. Touch screens weren't that developed. Uh, and they were super expensive at the time. Uh, I remember coming back with uh, in, in around 2000 with the first LCD uh, as well uh, that was a 10.4 inch LCD that was like a, a $10,000 LCD. Now they're a couple <laughs> hundred bucks, you know, they're nothing. But I remember buying a dedicated Dude, suitcase old. and going bringing this back. Yeah, so I'm old, but yeah, I've been around a while. But anyway, the bottom line is that We've slowly, over time, adopted office networking technology, uh, digital interfaces, uh, LCD technology to come to where we are today with these super flexible systems that are easy to create, like you said, building block kind of structures on your boat depending on what you need. You, right. can, you can add and remove uh, uh, MFDs, you can add features, functionality, anywhere you go on the boat and have this system uh, and just increase your situational awareness across the board, uh, like a million times better than what and, we had And we then. as a company and developers have learned along the way, and we've learned from customers that have given us feedback and the things that they like and the things that they don't like. And so, as you know, we went from the FRS 1000 to Navnet 1 VX2 to Navnet 3D, we, you know, we introduced the first uh, dual touch uh, MFD with, right. with TZ Touch 1. Yeah, you can tell, yeah. We, we did that and you can just take this and kind of lean it over, lean that chart over depending on what you're doing. I'm on, a, I'm on my side here, but uh, still pretty easy to do. And, yeah, and pop that back in, back and forth yeah, really and nice. So, so we refined that user interface, went away from what the, the difficult things in uh, Navnet 3D were, and we started refining that user yeah. interface to make it easier. Went from TZT 1, TZT 2 came out yeah. in like 2015. Yeah. And then that changed that interface, and really we started with the edge swiping and bringing those things in. Yeah. TZT3 was even better yet, and, mm -hmm. and we did, uh, do you remember when we did uh, Fruno Connections 2, where we hadn't even introduced TZT3 yet, but we put it on four different boats and compared it to the competitors, right. and, and put it out there to really test the user interface against everything else that was out there, and yeah. blown away yeah. on how easy that yeah. was to use. TZ Touch 3, uh, not Navnet 3D, but TZ Touch 3 is always TZ Touch 3. Yeah, yeah, and boom, that was huge. And just the capability to have edge swiping where you could easily swipe down, swipe out, swipe up, swipe, swipe across, it made it so much easier. Right. And the user interface just kind of, it, you, oh, it, when you start using that compared to Navnet 3D, you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that back then. But right. that's what we had to do at the time right. because it just wasn't there. But technology caught up with the user interface, which is a nice thing, made it super easy. And up the, on the back side, on the hardware side, networking became even more simple and plug and play capabilities came. You know, and now, now it's pretty straightforward. You can literally plug this stuff together with a single hub, dedicated cables, and have a working system on your boat 
for a brand new boat or retrofit a boat, really super simple, you know. And in the past, you always had to worry, like I said earlier, you know, I wonder if that transducer will work with this system because there was only dedicated, you know, frequencies in these machines. But now with this frequency agility, you can program any frequency transducer that's on the boat to what, you know, to, to you can program these MFDs to any of those transducers. So there's no worry anymore. We took the worry out of it. And even if you have just two bare wires coming up from the, from the bottom, you can try a couple different frequencies, see where it starts to work. Oh yeah, look, I'm getting a good bottom. And then shift it a, a kilohertz or two kilohertz and actually really dial it in to where it optimizes right. that older transducer and makes it work just like new again. Right. Pretty amazing, pretty right. amazing, yeah. Yep. And so, not even mentioning Chirp, you know, Chirp, uh, Again, is another paradigm shift where suddenly you saw a single blob on the on the plotter or on the on the fish finder display. Now you could literally count individual fish with chirp technology. It's pretty amazing. Right. Yeah. So, so if if you think of Furudo and you think of it's difficult to use, that is not the not case. In, not the case anymore. anymore. No. It, it yeah. is totally different than yeah. where where it was. Yeah. So, if you have not seen it in recent years, I highly encourage you to go take a look at yeah. it.